If there's one place in the aerospace industry that never sleeps, it's got to be SpaceX's Starbase. Within just 20 days of Starship Flight 7's launch, SpaceX has been working relentlessly to restore the launch pad and rapidly prepare the hardware for Flight 8. So far, the company appears to be on track for a potential liftoff as early as the end of this month. However, despite SpaceX having a clear roadmap with a launch schedule aligned with the necessary Starship hardware test, the company still has to wait for the FAA approval following the investigation of the Flight 7 explosion last month. So, can SpaceX meet all the FAA requirements for Starship to launch by the end of the month? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On Feb 10th, SpaceX successfully conducted a static fire test for all 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy Booster 15 at the launch pad. For those who regularly follow Starship news, such tests have become familiar. However, this event was still remarkable as we witnessed the impressive performance of a full array of Raptor 2 engines through live video and stunning images, so much so that even Elon proudly shared them on his X account. Following the successful test, Booster 15 just needs to complete a final step, the wet dress rehearsal, before being ready for launch. So, SpaceX still has plenty of time to work on this prototype as the planned launch date remains at the end of this month. Booster 15's partner for this flight is Ship 34, the most closely watched prototype right now. Not only because it'll take part in Starship Flight 8, but also because it is a version 2 Starship. SpaceX has been accelerating the development of this just two days after Flight 7, Ship 34 completed its cryogenic proof test at Massey's. The vehicle was then transported to Mega Bay 2, where its aft flaps, engines, and other necessary modifications got installed. Once everything was in order, Ship 34 moved to Massey's test site to prepare for a static fire test. Following the test, SpaceX engineers will have an extended period for review and post-test evaluation. Honestly, the progress of Ship 34 is being closely monitored, and compared to previous Starships, its development pace might be slightly slower. The primary goal of Flight 8 is to avoid repeating the issues encountered in Flight 7. So, any fixes or improvements SpaceX implements on Ship 34 needs to be thoroughly tested before the next launch. In this effort, Test Tank 16 plays an important role. This tank is used to evaluate potential design fixes before Flight 8. This specialized test campaign allows SpaceX to conduct high-stress experiments on structural components, propellant flow systems, and pressure resilience. By pushing Test Tank 16 to the limit, engineers can decide whether their modifications improve the durability and performance of Starship. There has been some speculation about Test Tank 16's composition, with some theories suggesting that it might contain components from the aft section of Starship Block 2. If true, this would indicate that SpaceX has already begun incorporating the next-generation design improvements into its testing program. Whether Test Tank 16 represents incremental refinements or an early step toward Block 2, its results will be crucial in shaping Flight 8 and future Starship Starship missions. Beyond its intense focus on Starship's hardware, SpaceX is also actively preparing for the integration and deployment of Starlink V3 satellites on the upcoming flight. This will mark a significant step forward in testing how Starship can function as a high-capacity payload carrier for the next generation of Starlinks. Unlike previous Falcon 9s, which deploy satellites using a sequential release mechanism, Starship's payload bay allows for a more efficient bulk deployment system. Inside the high bay, engineers are actively testing the Starlink loading and dispenser system to ensure a smooth development process. This system is designed to handle the bigger and heavier Starlink V3 sats, which can offer enhanced performance and improved laser interconnects for global broadband. The ability to launch dozens, if not hundreds of satellites in a single flight could revolutionize SpaceX's satellite constellation strategy, reducing costs and increasing deployment speed. One of the unique aspects of Starship's payload integration is its large side-mounted payload bay, which differs from traditional vertically stacked payloads used by most rockets. This configuration allows for rapid and simultaneous deployment of multiple satellites, a crucial advantage for large-scale Constellation missions. If successful, Flight 8 will demonstrate how Starship can become the primary workhorse for mass deployment, reinforcing its role in SpaceX's long-term vision for global connectivity and deep space missions.
Despite making progress, SpaceX still faces a challenge with Matt's getting FAA approval. While recent tests are rapidly validated technical improvements and preparations for Flight 8, everything ultimately depends on the pace of the FAA review. In its latest statement, the FAA confirmed that no injuries or damages had been reported after the explosion of Ship 33. For details on this, please review this video on our channel. However, given the broad scope of the ongoing debris investigation, many are concerned about the FAA not approving Flight 8 in time for its planned launch at the end of this month. So, why does SpaceX need FAA approval, and what's taken them so long? The FAA is in charge of regulating all aspects of aviation, from passenger airlines to rocket launches. Since space vehicles share the same airspace as airliners, the FAA is responsible for making sure that everything is carried out safely and the public is protected. However, the FAA's involvement in air travel is very different from launching rockets. Putting in perspective, the FAA handles about 16.5 million flights a year. In the space world, the number of launches to happen this year is around 150. But now that space tourism is becoming a real thing, this number is going to start growing rapidly over the next few years. SpaceX has a plan to operate Starship with hundreds of passengers traveling each day. With the FAA's current rules, this would be impossible. But nowadays, getting a license is not a quick thing. It can take the FAA up to 180 days to review it. This process involves a huge amount of testing and verification before getting the all clear. In order to operate a spaceport, the FAA also needs to do intense environmental checks to make sure rocket launches won't disrupt or destroy any nearby wildlife. Even if a license is granted, it only covers that particular rocket for that specific location, assuming that the rocket will follow a similar trajectory for all of its launches. If a rocket is to be launched from a different location, a new license is needed. All of this takes a lot of time, and as private space companies continue to make advancements, the FAA is starting to fall behind. So, how can Starship launch proceed smoothly without concerns over FAA regulatory constraints? To be fair, the role of the FAA is to ensure the public interest is met, and the most visible public interest is to avoid having burning metal falling out of the sky. But it's also in the public interest to develop spacecraft systems that actually work well even if the processes might seem unorthodox. Considering that SpaceX used this process with the Falcon rockets, and they are probably the most reliable ones flying today, the unorthodox process has a great deal of merit. You can think of it as a calculated risk on the part of SpaceX. There are primary aspects that they need to test and then secondary actions that can be tested in the event of success or failure, rather than engaging in analysis paralysis. In a sense, we feel this question was asked because of a comment made which was along the lines of, if the government can't find a way to appreciate the blessing SpaceX is bringing to the US, then perhaps SpaceX should unbolt the equipment from the floor and move to China. However, SpaceX can't relocate away from the USA because of the ITARS regulations that would prohibit them from exporting any of their rocket technology. ITARS is the law that prohibits the exportation of technology that could be used for making munitions. You see, back in the 1960s, the United States alone had the technology to adjust the thrust of a rocket. For the rockets, if your guidance system could adjust the thrust, then you'd have much greater control over accuracy. Issues like that were at the forefront of concern in the Cold War, and the technology to prevent that technology from falling into the wrong hands was significant. The Starship platform has been largely discussed in public media and presented on numerous occasions. It has some powerful motors that it uses in large quantities, and it almost certainly has technology that could fall into ITAR's jurisdiction. FAA regulations apply more or less everywhere, but there seems to be some kind of agreement whereby spacecraft can launch from NASA facilities in Florida without any difficulties. So that looks like the most likely place, and indeed SpaceX is building a rocket factory in the second Starship launch towers there. The second way for SpaceX to break free from the FAA's grasp is through the changes within the agency itself. Despite repeated calls from Congress for the FAA to expand their workforce, even that's been delayed, let alone other proposed reforms from the space industry. Overall, expectations for change within the FAA are low. Perhaps recognizing this, some members of the current administration have expressed a desire to reform the agency. However, this situation has gotten more complicated due to tensions involving Elon, who not only heads SpaceX, but also holds a key position in Doge. Senator Maria Cantwell, a Democrat out of Washington, who is the ranking member of the Senate Commerce Committee, sent a letter to Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy raising concerns that Elon's involvement in the reform of the FAA poses a clear conflict given his stake in the company SpaceX. 
I'm sending a letter to Secretary Duffy. It's clear conflict of interest. Duffy should make sure that Elon is not part of the FAA air transportation system. He has been fined for violations, Cantwell told reporters, pointing out that Elon pressured former admin Michael Whitaker to resign on the day of President Trump's inauguration, leaving the agency without a leader before an American Airlines flight out of Wichita, Kansas, collided with a Black Hawk helicopter in D.C., killing 67 people. The FAA under Whitaker had proposed $633,000 in SpaceX fines for failing to follow license requirements during two launches the year before last. Senator Cantwell said Elon worked hard to get Mr. Whitaker, somebody who was approved 98 to 0, out of the system. In a letter to Duffy released, Cantwell noted that she told Duffy in a recent meeting that she would work with him to modernize FAA, but her concern that the newly formed Confirmation Transportation Secretary didn't mention his intention to involve Elon in all that. When we spoke, you didn't discuss your intention to involve Elon Musk in the FAA's safety systems and processes. It's a conflict of interest for someone whose company is regulated by the federal government to be involved in anything that affects his personal financial interest, his company, or his competitors, Cantwell wrote. The Washington state senator wrote that the FAA had a legal responsibility for safety and oversight of companies with commercial transportation licenses and therefore should not be influenced by Elon, whose rocket launches occupy that airspace. Elon's SpaceX rocket launches share the same airspace with commercial airlines, and the FAA has responsible for keeping that space safe. SpaceX had been fined by the FAA for failing to comply with specific requirements in its launch license, she wrote. She reiterated her concern that Elon called for the firing of Mike Whitaker because the FAA fined SpaceX for not following the rules. We have ethics and recusal laws for a reason, to prevent corporate interference and protecting the public interest, she argued. Elon announced Wednesday that Doge, which he leads, will make rapid safety upgrades to air traffic control systems overseen by the FAA. With the support of President Trump and the Doge team will aim to make rapid safety upgrades to air traffic control system, Elon wrote Wednesday on the Platform X, which he owns. He cited a recent outage of the FAA's notice to air mission system as evidence of the need to upgrade its systems. Senate Commerce Committee Chair Ted Cruz out of Texas on Thursday applauded Elon's potential involvement in reform of the FAA. I've been advocating for a long time modernization of air traffic control. Our air traffic control technology is from the 1950s, he told reporters. The fact that Elon, one of the top CEOs on planet Earth, is available to bring his expertise and the expertise of world-class engineers to bring air traffic control out of the 50s and into the 21st century, I think that's a real opportunity. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.